Hey friends and neighbors, Dan Cavallari, slow guy on the fast ride. I am back from Denmark, and uh, if you've been watching this video all the way through, you know that uh, I had intended to go to the hotel and do a gear review of all the things that I used, what worked, what didn't, what I brought that I shouldn't have, and what I'm glad I brought. Uh, the reason I didn't do that is because about a mile from my, not even a mile from my hotel, there was a mass shooting, uh, and I caught that on video. I'm not going to put it in here. I don't think you need to see that traumatizing stuff. Uh, needless to say, it derailed my uh, ability to record uh, some videos for you guys. So I'm back here in the garage here in Colorado, and I wanted to give you the gear rundown of what I used, what was great, what I would probably leave at home next time. Uh, so let's, let's dive right in. Uh, first and foremost, uh, indispensable was the Hammerhead Karoo 2. Uh, one thing I forgot to do was get a SIM card for this, which is would, would, would have allowed me to do more routing on the fly. Uh, I would have been able to add points of interest, things like that. I forgot to get a SIM card, so I wasn't able to do that. But this was really great. I could dump routes on this very quickly using Ride with GPS, uh, dump the routes on there. I knew exactly where to go. This thing was really, really good. The routing on this is incredible. I'm gonna do a full review of this pretty soon, so you'll see more on this. Uh, there's two components to my trip that were vital. One was bags. And so let's run through that. Now, I know you guys saw me packing my bags when I was at the airport. I used this two-wheel gear uh, duffel bag, uh, this pannier duffel bag. This is really cool. Um, it, it hauls a lot of stuff. And if you unzip this panel over here, you can see that it'll work, work with just about any pannier and it locks into place using this red tab. Super convenient. So I was able to use this as a check bag and then just zip it uh, up and use it as a pannier when I had my, my tail fin rack, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. The one thing I don't love about this is these straps on the back. This is used to secure it to uh, the, the pannier rack so that it doesn't swing back and forth. Well, the problem is my tail fin rack only has one arm. And so basically it would be like this. And so it was able to move back and forth quite a bit. So I ended up getting some heel strikes. Small detail, I guess. Uh, I would like to see this refined. Literally everything else about this duffel bag, I absolutely loved. Uh, it's plenty spacious. It was super easy to mount on my pannier. This was really the savior for me of the entire trip. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is I had this thing packed pretty, pretty much to the gills, uh, which was a mistake that I made. I brought way too much stuff. Uh, if you're bringing a lot of stuff, if you're going to be staying a long time, this is a great option. But what I used for my pannier was this tail fin uh, carbon uh, pannier rack, which has an adapter that goes into here so you can mount any, any uh, pannier bag you want. But I actually have these ones that are specifically made for it, the tail fin pannier bags. And these slip on here very, very easily. Um, it's, it's a great system. And I actually think if I had packed lighter, I would have been totally fine with even just one of these bags rather than even two. And I have two of them, one that goes on each side. Uh, so if I had packed lighter, this would have been plenty. Uh, the tail fin rack is super light, great, packable, fit in my Oro case B2 very well. Uh, I think this would have been plenty for what I was doing. So the tail fin rack worked out really well. You should know that this is no longer a current model. Uh, there is one that has been updated with some refinements. It's basically the same uh, setup. It's just as easy to use. I think it's just maybe a little bit lighter and a couple of refinements. So no big deal there. But this was definitely a win. I'm very glad I brought this. All right. Now, one of the things that I was on the fence about bringing was this Ortlieb uh, top tube bag. I wasn't sure if I was gonna need it, uh, and it actually ended up being pretty indispensable, and I'll tell you why. So this, the one, uh, uh, let me start with the complaint, because that's how I am. Uh, the zipper is a little bit difficult to use. It's a little bit hard to pull, but it's also pretty secure and it's waterproof. So one of the reasons I really loved the fact that I brought this was because I was using this, uh, this DJI Osmo Pocket 2 to film most of what I was doing for you guys. And it fits just perfectly right here. And this mounts to the top tube, so it was really easy to grab this while I was riding. Uh, if I needed to do some run and gun stuff uh, at the team paddocks, it was super easy to grab out of this bag. Uh, it's super easy to mount, Velcro straps, uh, like I said, waterproof. The zipper is a little bit tough to, to pull open and close, but 
uh, you know, that's to me a pretty minor complaint given how convenient it ended up being. So really glad I brought this, uh, worked out really well. This is obviously for bike packing and things like that. This worked out really well for, I guess, what you would call light touring for what I was doing in Copenhagen. So big win here. Let's talk camera uh, equipment. So I had to bring a lot of camera equipment and I had to wear a lot of it on my back, which was unfortunate. But uh, one of the things that I invested in, which was not cheap, was a good camera bag. I've been through tons and tons of camera bags. This is by far my favorite. This is the uh, Nomadic McKinnon 35L. Uh, it is not light. Uh, so be prepared for that. It's a pretty heavy pack, but if you're bringing a lot of photo equipment, which I was, this thing is killer. Uh, and in fact, I've used this on a trip before where I didn't even have to bring a carry on or excuse me, a check bag because this is, this expands and you have a front pocket where you can put all your clothing and things like that. And it expands big enough that you can pack quite a bit in there. What's really cool about it though, is in the photo compartment which is on the other side. You can see my little Tour de France badge. Boom, Tour de France. Um, this is a really cool bag for organizing all your camera gear. But what I really, really love, and this is an extra, it doesn't come with the bag, you have to purchase it extra, is this cube right here. Uh, and you can see it's just a, another padded cube. But when you pull it out uh, and you have your whole bag here with all your equipment, if you need to do some uh, day trip, you know, or you need to go carry less stuff, you have this expandable bag it becomes a backpack. And so I ended up using this quite a bit. I would leave all my, my camera equipment in here, take just what I needed, put it in this backpack and just go run to the tour stages. This was awesome. So the flexibility of it all really great. So if you're doing traveling and you're going to be doing some sort of like I got to bring a lot of camera equipment, leave it in my hotel room, and then go, go do some day trips. This is killer. It's not cheap. The bag itself, I think, is around $400. This costs another $100. Uh, so not cheap, but easily the best bag that I've ever uh, used for camera equipment. So good investment. If you're ready to spend a lot of money, you want the last bag you're going to buy, this is it. Let's talk about what I used to record all those wonderful videos that you guys have watched. The central component to it is this DJI Osmo Pocket 2, which is this little camera. I'll take it out of the, the handle here so you can see what it looks like. It's pretty diminutive. Uh, it's, it's easy enough to shove in your pocket. So for tourists, if you're just trying to capture your vacation, man, you can't beat this thing. It's super small. It's got a gimbal, uh, image stabilization. You can walk around. It's going to be super smooth footage easy to use, just two buttons on the back, one to turn it on over here, touch screen. It, this can't be beat. It's really such a great tool for travel. Uh, if you do any video blogs or vlogs, as the kids call them, I don't know, I'm old. Um, this is an indispensable tool. Uh, as an added uh, feature, I ended up buying this extension rod uh, right here. And you can see it, it goes right out. So you can just do a lot of like, Hey, here I am in some really cool place. But what's really neat about it is you can a mount your phone to it and connect the whole works to your phone. So you have a bigger screen to see what you're shooting, but also B you've got all these controls right here. So you can control the camera using all these buttons right here. You can turn the gimbal, you can hit record, you can flip the, the camera around really neat. This was indispensable. This, this is what I ended up shooting almost all of my video on while I was in Copenhagen. One thing that I managed to leave in Copenhagen that I really wish I hadn't, uh, was a little tripod that screws into the bottom here. And it's, you know, this is not what I brought, but it just, it screws into the bottom and it gives you a place to just sort of plop this down and you can do stand ups. So, so if you are actually doing vlog style, uh, content that, that, little tripod is worthwhile. I'll put a link to it down in the, in the bio here so you can see what I'm talking about, but it's basically just a little tiny tripod that that's, uh, uh, screws into the bottom. And what's cool is the legs fold down straight. So you just have sort of an extra, uh, place to stabilize things. Uh, this was absolutely the savior of my trip. One reason why is because you can get, uh, some accessories for it like this, which is a lav mic. 
Um, and this clips on, you know, you just clip it on right here, immediately links to the camera itself. So you can just walk around and you can have great audio. Doesn't matter how far away the camera is. You're not reliant upon a tiny little microphone on your camera itself. So this was a, a wonderful companion to the camera itself. It allowed me to get better audio when I was doing the, the full rod extension, like so. See that? And the audio is quite good. I'm, I was pretty impressed. This camera can also shoot 4K. I mean, it's just got so many great features if you're shooting uh, video on the fly. You'll need the wireless attachment, which goes right on there. Uh, but it, it, they, they do sell a kit, so you can get the whole thing all at once. Uh, when I wasn't using the uh, full uh, rod, selfie extension rod here, uh, there's other little attachments you can get for the camera like this one and it has just a little wheel here and two buttons and then what that allows you to do when you connect it to the camera it goes by like right there you can actually hold it and you can use this 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 knob here to control the gimbal so you can turn left turn right turn right or you can go up and down it really opens up a lot of good filmmaking opportunities the infamous pump <laughs> if you watched, uh, I think it was episode two, when I land in Copenhagen and I have to build the bike up, I spend a lot, a lot of time pumping up my tires. Uh, you know, these have to go up to 80 PSI. Uh, and I basically chose the smallest pump I had. And I also chose a pump that um, has some added features here. This is unscrews and you can use it as a CO2 inflator. You just take this little head off and you can screw a CO2 into it. So I wanted as much versatility as I could get. You also notice there's a flexible hose. So it was just sort of the most versatile and the smallest pump I could get. Problem with it, it takes a whole lot of pumps to get a tire up to 80 PSI with this thing. So if I had to do this again, I would probably choose a slightly larger pump. I would leave it in my uh, Oro case B2, which I checked at the airport. Go back to episode two, you'll see that. Uh, this was fine, it got me there eventually. It's light, uh, it was easy to pack, but I would probably pick something a little bit bigger. What lube did I use? I used, because I was testing it, the uh, Effetto Mariposa Flower Power Wax. This uh, is interesting. It's an eco-friendly product that's made from uh, sunflower wax. Uh, so it, I, I, I'm trying to make an effort to be as eco-friendly as possible as I can in this sport of ours. Uh, so this is a good option. I was really interested to see uh, if this wax lubricant could stand up to the same conditions as other synthetic lubricants. And the answer is yes, but it does wear a, a little bit faster. So I did have to apply it more often. Uh, it doesn't collect nearly as much dirt as some wax lubes I've used, so that's pretty great. Uh, and according to Effetto Mariposa, in terms of friction, it's actually one of the better lubes. Again, you know, you take that with a grain of salt because it is a, a study done by the company itself. But if their data is to be trusted and they did farm it out to a third party, this is actually a pretty fast lube. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. I've been happy with this. It does take a little bit more application uh, than, than some other lubes that I've used that last a little bit longer. But otherwise, I've had no problems with it. It's been great. So um, not much else to say about that. And finally, the Oru case B2R, which I'm not going to hold up because it's way too heavy, uh, but it's over here. I'll show you some pictures later. Uh, I brought my, my titanium Merlin bike uh, with Hunt race wheels, silly enough. I should have probably gotten something a little bit uh, with a higher weight limit, but they survived. They were great. Um, I brought my bike in an Oru case B2R. I've now used this travel case several times. Not once have I come back with any damage to my bike. It's been great. Uh, it's pretty compact. It folds down uh, pretty small. So I was able to check this bag into a very small locker at the airport and leave it there for the week. So I didn't have to contend with toting it around. Uh, it also, uh, you, well, it doesn't come with it, but you can buy extra a frame protection kit, which I've talked about pretty extensively. Uh, it, it's so easy to use. I would say even if you don't buy the Oro case B2R, get the frame protection kit. It's so easy to use. It's so much better than taping and getting uh, uh, pipe insulation and all the nonsense we've dealt with in the past. Get that. Absolutely. Now I, I would hoped to use, uh, or cases new case, but they couldn't get me a sample in time, so I'll have to just go travel somewhere else and uh, and do another test of that. But the B2R is hard to beat, especially for a road bike or gravel bike. If you're going to use a mountain bike, they do make a mountain bike specific bag. Uh, look into that one instead. Uh, but but I've been very very happy with the Oro case B2R. 
So I should mention that my bike is a 56. Uh, that's probably the top end of where I would recommend uh, putting in the B2R. If you've got a 58 or a 60, you might have some trouble. Uh, check the Oru Case website. Definitely reach out to them. They, they're very responsive. Uh, see what they recommend. But it, you know, it is a little bit difficult to pack the bike in there. You do have to remove the fork. Uh, and bigger frame sizes are going to be a little bit trickier to get in there. So just be aware of that. Um, if you talk to Oru Case, they can tell you what will fit in there and what won't, so definitely reach out to them. And like I said, if you have a mountain bike, you're definitely gonna wanna opt for a bigger bag than the B2R, which is road specific. Let's talk a little bit about my bike choice. So I brought my, my titanium Merlin Extra Light, beautiful bike, and I've, I've traveled with this a lot. Clearly I have it set up for travel with the, the couplers. I don't even need to use these to get it into my Oro case. So if I had to do it again and go to Copenhagen to do what I just did, I wouldn't even bring my bike. Uh, because Copenhagen's infrastructure is so good and there are so many options for bike shares. I didn't even really need this bike uh, it, unless I was going to go do some recreational riding. So if I had to do Copenhagen again, I probably wouldn't even have brought a bike. But here's an important tip. If, whenever you're traveling anywhere, you need to research what the infrastructure is like there. If I was going somewhere else in Europe, uh, not all cities are like Copenhagen where the infrastructure is just top notch. Sometimes you will need to bring your own bike. Uh, in this case, if I had to do it again, I would totally just use the, the uh, bike shares and public transportation. Their metro system is wonderful. Trains run frequently. I probably just would have done that. So I was there for work. If you're going there recreationally, obviously you're gonna want your own bike because I think you're gonna be riding around more, doing more scenic stuff. I was there for work. I probably just would have used the bike share. Instead, uh, it would have simplified the process for me and given me a lot less to carry around. But for you, if you're going there to enjoy the, the town and actually you know, explore and do some longer rides, bring your own bike. But leave it in the Airbnb or the hotel room uh, when you're exploring town and just use the rental bikes. It's safer that way. You don't have to lock your bike up and, and take, take a chance on that. Uh, bikes like this, if you leave them locked up outside, chances are you're going to attract some thieves. So just be smart. Uh, research the, the infrastructure of where you're going. See what the options are. Uh, and just be smart about where you're leaving your personal bike. Now, because I was carrying a lot of stuff, uh, a camera bag, a duffel bag, a pannier rack, I probably would have uh, brought my gravel bike instead. Why? Because I can get wider tires on there and stouter wheels. Uh, one of the things I noticed about the pannier system and all the weight I was carrying was on these race tires, and these are 28s, uh, it was still, the bike was really wibbly wobbly. Uh, so when you add weight like that, it helps to have wider tires, wider wheels. I probably would have brought a gravel bike instead, even though it would have been a little bit slower, you know, there's more rolling resistance, there's more tread. I still think I would have been happier with a gravel bike in this particular instance. So learning experience there, but really what I needed to do was lighten my load. I should have brought less stuff, especially since there was a washing machine at my Airbnb. I probably could have just brought one or two outfits instead of like the seven that I brought. So that's my basic gear rundown of what I brought to Copenhagen uh, to cover the Tour de France by bike. Some of the stuff I definitely overpacked. I would have brought fewer clothing. I would have brought fewer uh, bits and bobs. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the gear that I did use. Uh, the, the camera bag, the two-wheel gear duffel, uh, the tail fin rack, all performed beautifully. So I'm pretty pleased with how, how well this went. I think next time I will change a few things out, but basically happy with uh, all the gear that I brought and, and how it performed. If you like this video, go down there, give it a thumbs up. And of course, uh, give us a, a subscribe here on YouTube and go follow us on Instagram at slow guy on the fast ride on Twitter. We're at at slow guy fast ride. Uh, and thank you for watching. Please do check out some of our other videos on the channel. We're always reviewing gear. We're always doing great content, uh, fun stuff about bikes. Thanks for joining.